Hi everybody, welcome to uh, a new segment here at Submer where we focus in on world leading hardware vendors, hardware brands. Uh, today we have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Paloma from Fujitsu. Um, we'll come into a bit more detail on Paloma in just a moment. Uh, but just while we're getting started, for me to say hello, my name is Dermot, otherwise known as D. I look after the commercial aspects here at uh, Submer. Um, today we're going to cover, uh, as I said, regarding Fujitsu, talking to Paloma about the brand. Uh, they are one of the oldest IT companies in the world and one of the most admired brands. Um, so today with Paloma, we'll learn about the brand and the portfolio, and we're going to focus in on the current server range and what those servers uh, in that range or in those ranges are actually used for today. And we'll also get an insight from Paloma to find out what the future has in store for Fujitsu and what we have to expect. So um, for anyone here who has not been following Submar or what we've been doing, uh, you can follow us on lots of different channels. We're fairly active, um, bringing to you hopefully very valuable content and also some uh, entertainment, also delivering stuff in and around immersion cooling, which is our topic. But before any further ado, I'd like to introduce Paloma. Paloma, welcome. Thank you, Dimut. Thank you for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity to present Fujitsu. You're very welcome, Paloma. So, Paloma, we've known each other maybe for around about a year and a half, something like that. I'm trying to remember the exact timeline. But you haven't always, I suppose, worked at Fujitsu. From what I understand, it's been one of your first jobs straight out of, uh, out of university where you were an industrial engineer or you studied industrial engineering. What more can you tell us then about you and how you came in to join Fujitsu in Europe? Uh, yeah, as you have said, I have studied industrial engineering and this is actually my first company. And I guess while, while I was studying, I, I always imagined myself working in an interdisciplinary job, uh, a mixture of technical and management or business and ideally in an international environment and managing products or topics relevant to all businesses or at a global scale scale and I found the job product management suite this uh, description very well mm -hmm. and I had the chance of doing an internship in Fujitsu in product management and uh, I'm glad that I did because this gave me the door to the IT business and I realized how relevant it is and how important it is for all businesses and I didn't have this view before actually so I'm glad um, through this job I got into Fujitsu and the IT business. Excellent um, you're not originally from where you live I believe you live in Munich at the moment Munich Germany and yep. um, where are you originally from Paloma? Yeah I'm from Spain um, I studied in in Valencia but then I did a double degree program with the Technical University of Munich and I finished my studies here in Munich, so that's why uh, my internship at Fujitsu was here. And I'm, for the moment, I'm in Germany working. Okay, one of my favorite cities in the world, very close to the mountains in Austria and everything down there, the Alps. Yeah. Really, really well positioned. Excellent. Um, uh, we're going to. Um, get this introduction from you into uh, Fujitsu. So Paloma, please. Yeah, so Fujitsu is uh, the largest IT services provider in Japan. And we are, if I'm correct, uh, 132,000 employees in around 100 uh, countries. Uh, so it's a global company with, I think, in 2018, uh, 36 billion dollar revenue and the main well Fujitsu is present in the data center that's why we are here today but also phones and PCs desktops in the air conditioning sector or batteries I mean it has a very broad portfolio and it is not just products but also services and solutions so 
um, which it is present in many technological fields. Yeah. Okay, and as we see here, most of the people are indeed centered around Japan, which is to be expected, I guess. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um, please tell us a little bit more about this, uh, the data center system. Yeah, so now I'm only talking about the data center area, which is where I'm working. And the key message of this slide is that Fujitsu has a very broad portfolio and it's one of the few companies with such broad portfolio from industry standard servers, but also mainframes, which are, which are still an important part of the business network and also a big storage portfolio from uh, traditional storage to software defined, also backup appliances and tape libraries. So all in all, a, a big portfolio. And also we offer integrated systems. So this would be a combination of server storage network and software of some of our partners there you can see some names uh, and we offer this pre-installed pre-tested solution uh, with the services coming from Fujitsu so all in all uh, a solution for each customer uh, independently or on if cloud or in the data center or edge yeah, what, what surprised me in, in getting to know Fujitsu over the last year and a half, because we've been uh, collaborating on a couple of opportunities and nice things like that, has also been the percentages of your services business um, in, in Europe. Some of that is quite high, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think, well, I'm not sure now about, I think product is still... Uh, the majority, but we are getting bigger and bigger in the service area. Yeah, yeah, I think it's something like a 70 30 split product and services or something like that, but very interesting indeed. Um, we're obviously here to talk mostly or to zoom in on the server portfolio. So um, maybe you're going to introduce us to each one, give us an idea what the application is, etc. So that would be amazing. Uh, yeah, so this is the, the overview of our series, and yeah, if you if you want to, can go exactly uh, talking individually all different uh, series of servers. So starting with the TX, these are our tower servers, perfect for small and medium businesses, branches, and ed edge environments. And the main characteristic are that they are cost efficient and silent silent or quiet operation in order to be uh, next to the usage. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. You, would you like uh, an example or let's go through? I, I think, I, I think, you know, you, you, you mentioned the, um, you mentioned the, the SMBs and maybe if you could please give us an example. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the uh, typical use case would be at the point, point of sale. Uh, in retail, for example, or um, yeah, in any shop. Okay, so this would be the server which is under the counter that you probably don't really need. Yeah? Exactly. Okay, very good. Um, and now we'll move on to the, the Orex uh, and into the rack server range. Yeah, these are the, the typical industry uh, servers and the main characteristic is the scalability. Um, so it has good performance to fit the, the needs of the customer now and also to scale uh, for the future and it covers yeah 80 uh, percent of the the typical usages uh, which could be virtualization uh, graphics uh, databases for any yeah any industry let's say anyone who spends time in data centers uh, knows the look of the servers very well they're very broadly used yeah. Yeah, and always very, very distinctive with that green um, piece there. That's one of the characteristics of those of the Fujitsu line, isn't it? Uh, yeah, this is the look of our servers. Excellent. These are uh, the CX series. Something I'm very familiar with because we've been doing a good bit of stuff with this. But please, from from your side. Yeah. Uh, so these are um, multi-node servers. So the main characteristic is the density and scalability. So in these um, SASIS, you can have 
uh, we do you eight uh, CPUs, so it's a lot of compute, and that's, that's why it's perfect for HPC and uh, cloud, any services provider, etc. Yeah, and, and, and also um, they can house GPUs as well, can't they? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, I'm just familiar with them. Uh, they're very uh, positive or friendly for us because all of the components that we would need access to uh, are available on the top or can be available on the top. So for still for hot swapping, etc. Very, very good. Um, and maybe, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, AI, you mentioned HPC, and, and, and anything in, in particular regarding uh, a typical end user here? I think, uh, yeah, I will, uh, these are the main uses. What you have said, uh, it can be, it can be configured according to the needs, uh, but you would expect, yeah, the highest compute from one such servers and density of course absolutely okay um moving into the uh, prime quest uh, servers yeah the main characteristic of these servers is um the top performance and high availability so the main use case would be in-memory databases and mm -hmm. yeah they, they have the the most uh, CPUs, maybe you have eight CPUs in this in this uh, server, and would be perfect for, for example, an airline with for the booking system, giving oh, high yeah. availability or, uh, yeah, for big databases that would be the 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 preferred choice. Okay, and looking at this, is, this is a multi U uh, system, but it's still rack mountable, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Any idea? Is, is this typical or do they come in different sizes and different U heights? In our portfolio, I think we have 5U, 10U, 7U. So the, we have different models, um, but we're talking about yeah, well, the, the highest, so the largest the servers that we offer. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, moving maybe a little bit away from the servers themselves, uh, talking yeah. about the yeah. Go Sorry. You yeah, no, want to say that, yeah, this is our infrastructure manager on top of server storage network and uh, the Fujitsu software in order to manage in one platform uh, the majority of the items in the data center and third party, it so can also be managed. Okay. All right. Um, we're here kind of summarizing from your standpoint uh, the highlights of Fujitsu servers. So um, we know them as a uh, really uh, quality premium brand, I would say. Um, so what do you think is important that people take away? Yeah, I've, I've written here some highlights. Uh, the first one, the fact that uh, over the years Fujitsu has had a very uh, good benchmark, benchmark results and also the, uh, that we are excelling platform for HPC and in-memory computing for databases like SAP HANA and large-scale virtualization. And uh, the third point I'm putting here is the, the ISM or infrastructure management, um, which is simplifying and uh, making easy this management of all components. And the final point, which I think is the most important is uh, the 25 years uh, of the primary brand and this is this is a long uh, yeah a lot of time more or less from the beginning of of the yeah classical rack servers x86 uh, and offering quality and innovation during all these years so this is something that um, yeah we are proud of of this uh, tradition many things that we generally associate with japan and japanese quality and everything worldwide yep um, moving maybe a little bit towards some of the latest innovations, um, and this was something that I found super interesting. Perhaps you can tell us more. Yeah, I have chosen to talk about two of the latest uh, innovative and disruptive technologies from Fujitsu. 
Uh, one is the digital annealer, which is uh, like a coprocessor that Fujitsu has developed, uh, inspired in quantum computing. It is not quantum computing, it's a um, digital circuit, but but it is inspiring in quantum computing and can solve one kind of problems that traditional IT cannot. And these are large um, combinatorial optimization problems. And then these kind of problems, there are, uh, let's say, millions of millions of solutions. And you're trying to look for the absolute optimal and uh, the digital analyst can find this optimal solution in a matter of uh, seconds. Uh, one typical example could be ra route planning. So maybe you have a fleet of trucks and they have to to serve uh, certain points and they have all to have to find the minimal or the shortest route possible, for example. And uh, we're talking about 10 to the 100 possibilities or uh, combinations. And you have the digital analyst who, who can uh, save a lot of time and money by finding the, the optimal solution so, so quickly. And other usage is also in the drug dis discovery, comparing molecules or um, or in production, in portfolio, in portfolio planning, in finance. So there are many different use cases. And this is a, a yeah, disruptive technology from, from Fujitsu that we are um, promoting now. OK, so it's actually commercially available now. Uh, yeah, as a, starting as a service, because you need these mathematical skills in order to map the problem. Um, but yeah. OK, great. Um, and Fugaku. Yeah, Fugaku, supercomputer, another processor from Fujitsu. Well, in this case, this was uh, developed with Riken uh, Research Institute in Japan, mm -hmm. and it is um, a CPU based on ARM architecture. And I think 150,000 of these CPUs will, build the, will be part of the supercomputer Fugaku uh, to be built, I'm not sure now, but I think this year, and to be operating maybe in 2021, 2022. And um, yeah, so this would be a, a very performant supercomputing and also energy efficient. And based on this CPU, there will be some commercial supercomputers, uh, much more smaller, of course, available to come in the next uh, years. So do we expect to see uh, Fujitsu making a big uh, comeback to supercomputing? Not that Fujitsu has been away. You still have quite a number of, um, of uh, clusters in the top 500. But do you think this is going to change the tide a little bit? Yeah, well, I think uh, it's a great start, definitely building the supercomputing and launching these commercial servers. Excellent. And if anyone wants more information on any of the server lines, etc., I presume best thing is to reach out to the um, Fujitsu sales teams in the different countries. Yeah, uh, I would say so. Or but to you directly. Yeah. Or to me directly. Can also it's yeah. also a possibility, of course. Great, great. And then regarding taking part in the annular program or something like that, is, is, is that a resource that's available on the Fujitsu Europe website or how do people find out? Yeah, uh, it is it can be found on the website, but of course, it's anybody contact me and I I know some of the colleagues that are working in the digital annealer and happy to to put people in, in contact. Fantastic. Um, this is, I believe, bringing us more or less to the end of our conversation here. Do you want to talk us through this? Yeah. Um, I think, wasn't there an image in the center? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is the final slide. And for conclusion, I would like to to explain a bit of, of the strategy of Fujitsu for the future. And uh, it is that I have been explaining a lot about Fujitsu products, mm -hmm. but we have realized that for the, custom, the customers, what they really want is to find a solution to their uh, problems. So a much more uh, solution oriented approach. Um, and this is what, what Fujitsu plans to do. Fujitsu 
wants to be a, a trusted and neutral advisor for the customer trying to solve um, their challenges with our expertise, with our partner ecosystem and with our uh, products and services and in particular this is this slide is talking about data uh, we realized that uh, the key players in the market are making use of data and monetizing it and extracting the value of the data for their businesses and we see this is where the market is going and the digital transformation will be a data-driven transformation and this is why Fuji2 has this approach with, with a co-creation methodology uh, of discussing with the customer how to extract the business value of the data, what is the necessary infrastructure, how to protect the data uh, the best, doesn't matter if, clo if cloud, um, edge core or everything. And all in all, yeah, using AI analytics and all the new technologies to to give this uh, value to the customer. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Fujitsu approach uh, to the data-driven transformation of businesses. Great, superb. Um, before we wrap up really quickly, Paloma, um, I would like to also say, like, if people are interested as well in things maybe more related to the immersion cooling side, then that's a, a submar topic. Um, and then just regarding uh, Fujitsu and maybe just a parting word from you regarding when you think about Fujitsu, it is something like that. What do you, what, what would be the either the emotion or the one thing that you would leave people with? Fujitsu is yeah, tradition, quality and innovation. Not bad, not bad, that we hadn't prepared. Thank you, Paloma. Thank you so much for joining us, Paloma, and um, take care. Yes, you too. Take care. Thank you.